your subject is probability and statistics and today our topic is laws of probability so following are some of the basic rules for the calculation of probability these rules have important application we will discuss the laws of probability which are most commonly used uh, related to this subject theorem number 1 is if phi is the impossible event then probability of phi is equal to 0 uh, so if there is any impossible event then there will be actually no favorable event for the possibility of that event so that's why the probability of occurrence definitely will be equal to zero so if we consider its example then just imagine that you have a, a set of even numbers and uh, uh, from this you want to find the probability of getting any odd number so that probability must be equal to zero because there will be no a, a single odd number a, in this set so theorem number two is law of complementation if a bar is the complement of an event a relative to the sample space s then uh, or in other words a bar a, in other words we can say that probability of non-occurrence of an event so uh, for example the formula will be probability of non-occurrence of an event is equal to 1 minus probability of occurrence for any particular event because uh, the sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1 so uh, if we just subtract the probability of occurrence from 1 then the remaining probability will definitely be the uh, non-occurrence uh, for that event If we consider the example number one, a coin is tossed four times in in succession. What is the probability that at least one head occurs? So, uh, in the statement, a coin has been tossed four times, and we are interested to find the probability that at least one head occurs. So. Uh, for the solution the sample space as for this experiment consists of 2 raised to power 4 is equal to 16 sample points as each task can result in two outcomes and we assume that each outcome is equally likely so let a represent the event that at least one head occurs so yeah, if we just uh, assume event A according to our requirement then A must be the event that at least one head occurs then A consists of many sample points on the other hand A bar is the event that no head occurs and A bar has a single sample point a, a, that sample point will be consist on four tails because on the remaining all the sample points there must be any head so therefore the probability of non-occurrence of A, uh, you have to apply the basic definition of probability. The, uh, for the non-occurrence of A, there is only one sample point or one favorable event. So 1 over 16 because you have total 16 sample points as your number of sample space is 16. So and by applying the law of complementation, probability uh, of occurrence of event A is equal to 1 minus probability of non-occurrence of A. So 1 minus 1 over 16 it will be equal to 15 over 16 so this is the probability that if a coin is tossed four times then that will be the probability for getting at least one head so similarly by applying this formula if you have been given the probability of non-occurrence for any event then you can definitely find the probability of occurrence for that particular event Theorem number 3 is addition law. If A and B are any two events defined in a sample space S, then the formula of addition law will be probability of A union B. This is a symbol to represent the addition law. 
equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. This is the mathematical formula for overlapping sets. Overlapping sets means the sets which have uh, some values in common. So, so that sets are actually known as the overlapping sets. And for discrete set actually this value becomes zero. Intersection value becomes zero. So if and B are mutually exclusive events and that happened actually for mutually exclusive events then probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. And actually we say, say that this is for the disjoint sets. Disjoint sets are those which sets have no common point or their, uh, or their intersection value becomes in other words becomes zero. Example number two is if one card is selected at random from a deck of 52 playing cards, what is the probability that the card is a club or face card? And the words which are used to indicate the addition law uh, are used or either etc. The words like that. So first of all, you have to understand your example statement that one card is selected from 52 playing card and we have to find the probability that it can be a club card or it can be a face card and this word or indicate that the addition law will be applied on this scenario and uh, and actually uh, these sets will be overlapping sets because in the club group there will be three face cards as I have told you in previous lecture that there are three face cards in every group of cards. So that's why now we will start the solution. Let A represent the event that the card selected is a club uh, B. The event that the card selected is a face card. So we have assumed the event A as a club card and the assume the event B as the face card and A a intersection B the event that the card selected is both a club and a face card. So then we need a probability of A union B. So that's why this is the addition case. So we have to definitely find the uh, union of uh, probability. So first of all, so so first look at your formula uh, uh, which you have studied. Uh, the addition law. So probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So we have to compute all these terms simultaneously. First of all we will find the probability of A since there are 13 clubs and your number of sample space are 52 so that's why probability of A is equal to number of favorable events over number of sample space and that will be 13 over 52. And for uh, computing the probability of B, there are 12 face cards in a, a, in, a, in all cards because, because 3 face cards in one group and there are 4 groups of cards so that's why 3 multiplied by 4 becomes 12. So probability of B is equal to 12 over 52. And uh, we uh, also want to find the probability of A intersection B. So for this you have to find out that how many cards are in common between these two groups and here you have to take the intersection of clubs with face cards and uh, if you focus then you will understand that there are three face cards in clubs because you know in the group of face cards uh, you have all the face cards but in the group of clubs there are only three face cards that will be king queen and jack of club so that will be uh, their intersection so the number of uh, intersection of a uh, so number of a intersection b will be three because these three cards only overlap in these two groups so that's why their probability will be number of a intersection b over number of sample space and number of a intersection b are number number of variable events uh, are three so th that's why three over 52 since three of clubs are also face cards. So just put in the values in your addition law and 
then simplify uh, your calculation so we have just put all these values and we have make the calculations and simplifications and finally uh, you get the answer of 22 over 52 uh, if someone want to simply uh, if someone want to uh, more simplify this uh, uh, state uh, answer then uh, he can uh, further divide uh, on 2 and that, that answer will also be considered as the right answer so example number 3 is a pair of dice are thrown find the probability of getting a total of either 5 or 11 uh, so a, you have thrown a pair of dice and here uh, you just uh, uh, have to find out the probability of getting 5 either 5 or 11 this either is also indicating that the addition law will be applied and uh, uh, and this r is also indicating the same thing so uh, uh, the requirement of the question is that the so you have to find the probability of getting either 5 or 11 uh, getting a total of so total mean actually sum of dots so first of all uh, the sample space has 36 outcomes when two dice are thrown because these 36 outcomes we have studied in previous lecture so uh, it should be clear to everyone that there are 36 outcomes if two dice are thrown so let a be the event that a total of 5 occurs so if we assume total of 5 as the event a and b be the event that a total of 11 occurs so then the two events are so then we have to find the entries of events a and b so entries of event a will be total of 5 so if uh, you uh, look at your sample space uh, uh, you can consult the sample space entries from your previous lecture then you will find out that 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. Only these four entries uh, are in sample space we, uh, whose sum is 5. And the set, set uh, and the we have to find the entries for the event B and which should be, uh, and for that the sum should be 11. So 5, 6, and 6, 5. Only these two entries from the sample space uh, are making the sum equal to 11 so and again if you look at both these two sets and if you want to take the intersection of these two sets so their intersection will be definitely equal to zero so that's why they are mutually uh, uh, exclusive events and uh, we want to simply uh, we can apply the simple formula as for, uh, we have studied for the discrete sets because these are actually the discrete sets so the event A and B are mutually exclusive as a total of 5 and 11 cannot both occur together because these two phenomena cannot uh, occur at the same time. So therefore, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. Just uh, put in the values and probability of A will be 4 over 36 and probability of B will be 2 over 36. Just add them and by simplification you will get the answer 1 over so if we consider the example number four three horses a b and c are in the race a is twice as likely to win as b and b is twice as likely to win as c what is the probability that a or b wins so a or b wins means the addition law will be applied and uh, we have to understand uh, the probability factors uh, which are given in the statement so first of all we will consider that let the probability of c is equal to p as the events are not equally likely so uh, uh, because the probabilities of winning are uh, different so that's why these are not equally likely events because you know the equally likely events have the same uh, probability for each event so 
for this case we we have just assumed that probability of c is equal to p so then the probability of b is twice as like likely to win at c so probability of b will be 2p because this is given in the statement that the probability of b is twice as likely to c and b is twice as as likely to win as c so that's why similarly if the probability of a is uh, twice as likely b so that's why 2 probability of a will be equal to 2 into probability of b because it is given in the statement just look at this a is twice as likely to win as b in other words probability of a is equal to 2 into probability of b so that's why just uh, putting the values 2 into 2p and you will obtain p probability of a is equal to 4p since a b and c are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive therefore the sum of their probabilities must be equal to 1 that's why so uh, if we uh, add the probabilities for different events and we just add them so uh, then uh, their answer will be 1 so, so we will uh, use that theorem and just simply add all these values so uh, this is the probability of c which is p plus probability of b which is 2p plus probability of a which is 4p equal to 1 and compute the value of p from all this so probability a value of p is actually 1 over 7 and so that's why the answer of probability of c will be 1 by 7 and probability of b is 2p so 2 into 1 by 7 you will obtain 2 by 7 and probability of a is 4p so 4 into 1 by 7 you will get 4 by 7 and hence uh, so just look at the statement uh, what is the probability that a or b wins so you just add up the probabilities of a, a a and b events so probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b just add up these two values 4 by 7 plus 2 by 7 and you will obtain 6 by 7 so this is the answer of, of your particular question example number five is a card is drawn and written at random from a deck of ordinary playing cards what is the probability that it is a diamond a face card or a king so now it is the case of addition because here the r is mentioned between and the requirements of the events so here we have to apply the addition rule but but just uh, first look at the addition rule for three events so if you have three events then first look at your for your formula probability of a union b union c is equal to this is the standard formula this is equal to probability of a plus probability of b plus probability of c minus probability of a intersection b minus probability of b intersection c minus probability of a intersection c and plus probability of a intersection b intersection c this is the standard formula this formula you must have to memorize so so uh, just understand the statement that you have the 52 playing cards uh, and uh, uh, you have to find out if one one card is picked up from the deck of cards and you have to compute that it can be a diamond card a face card or a king so that's why we have to apply the addition rule let a represent the event that the card is a diamond b the event that the card drawn is a face card c the event that the card drawn is a king and a intersection b the event that the card drawn is both a diamond and a face card and so on so then we need so this is the formula as we have discussed and at this stage we have to just compute all these parameters on the right hand side and then you will obtain the answer from left hand side so probability of a is equal to number of a, a, a events of a over number of samples case and so just look at the a group a is the card is a diamond and there are 13 diamond cards in 
playing cards so that's a 13 over 52 this is the answer of probability of a then probability of b is equal to number of events of b over number of sample space and just look at the b event b is a face card event so i have told you many times that there are 12 face card in card so that's why 12 over 52 because there are 12 face cards and just look at the c it is a king card so probability of c is equal to number of c events over number of sample space and it will be 4 over 52 because there are 4 kings in your cards and now we will take the intersection so a intersection b so you have to take the intersection of a group with b group so diamonds and face card so if we uh, look thoroughly there are only three cards in diamonds king queen and jack so because in b group you have all the face cards but the intersection will be just three because there are three face cards in diamond group so that's why probability of a intersection b is equal to 3 over 52 and then probability of b intersection c is equal to number of b intersection c over number of sample space and b and c groups are actually face cards and kings so if you look at there are four four kings and in cards and actually these four kings are also the face cards so their intersection will definitely be 4 over 52 and then the prob probability of a intersection c so a is the diamond group and c is the king group so if we look there is only one king card in diamonds so that's why the intersection probability will be 1 over 52 and now uh, we have to find next the uh, probability of a intersection b intersection c the combined intersection from all these groups so first of all number of a intersection b intersection c divided by number of sample space so now we have to calculate in the common card in all three groups one is the diamond group the second is the face card group and the third one is the king group so just imagine take the diamond and face card intersection so uh, you will have three a uh, face cards of diamond in that intersection and then take the intersection with king so you have three face cards of diamond and you have uh, have all the kings but you know there is only one king in that group so that's why the combined inter intersection will be just one king so 1 over 52 so and just uh, put in all these values in in the above mentioned formula so and do the necessity calculation uh, and you will find that your answer is 22 over 52 or if uh, you want to represent it in decimal then it will be 0 0.423 so that will be answer of your question so next law is the multiplication law if a and b are any two events defined in a sample space s then probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a into probability of b over a this formula is actually for dependent events and this probability of a you already know and this probability of b over a will be equal to this one so probability of b over a is equal to probability of a intersection b here it is the intersection sign uh, over probability of a and for the for independent events this formula becomes uh, this one probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a into probability of b so this is the formula for the independent events so these formula will be, will be used for the multiplication law problem number six is a box contains three red four blue and three orange balls a ball is selected at random compute the probability of getting a blue and orange ball so this one this word and is indicating that the <coughs> multiplication 
law will be applied on that problem <coughs> so first of all we have to compute the number of sample space just add up these balls 3 red 4 blue 7 and 3 orange 10 so there are the 10 balls let r is the event that ball is red colored b is the event that ball is a blue colored and o is the event that ball is orange colored first find individual probability of balls applying following formula so first we have to find the individual probabilities so probability of event is equal to number of favorable events over number of sample space and just put in the values uh, in this equation so probability of blue ball is 4 over 10 because there are 4 blue balls and there are 10 sample space and probability of orange is equal to 3 over 10 because there are 3 orange balls given in the statement so applying the multiplication law of probability probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a multiplied by probability of b uh, because there will be no intersection uh, value between orange and blue ball so that's why uh, <coughs> Uh, this uh, uh, rule may has been applied on multiplication rule <coughs> and actually these are also the uh, independent events because the probability of orange balls does not affect the probability of blue ball so in this case this formula will becomes as probability of b intersection o is equal to probability of b multiplied by probability of o this is this was just the general formula. So by putting the values, probability of B intersection O is equal to just putting the values and multiply the terms. This is 12 over 100 and finally if you simplify them and then the answer is 3 over 25. So this was the case when the events are independent. So uh, that, that then it was a utility of the multiplication. Rule. Next one is the conditional probability. If A and B are two events in a sample space S and if probability of B is not equal to zero, then the conditional probability of the event A given that the B has occurred written as probability of A over B is defined by probability of a over b is equal to probability of a intersection b over probability of b so this is actually the mathematical formula if you have condition in your statement and do you have to find the probability then actually this formula will be used and uh, when probably you will solve a next numerical problem then you will understand well this mathematical formula so where probability of b is greater than zero if probability of b is equal to 0, the conditional probability probability of a over b remains undefined and it will uh, become undefined. And similarly, probability of b over a is equal to probability of a intersection b over probability of a, where probability of a equal to 0. Example number 7 is when two coins are tossed, what is the conditional probability that two heads results? given that there is at least one head so just look at the statement at this this is the statement of conditional probability and you have the condition first condition is the two head results and the sec, uh, second condition is it is al already given that there is at least one head so uh, just look at the solution the sample space as for this experiment it, because it is a two point toss experiment so the sample space will be like this double head head tail tail head and double tail so let a so the first condition which is mentioned you uh, you will label it as a let a represent the event that two head results or two head appears and b should be the next condition given that there is at least one head and b is the event that there is at least one head so then we need probability of a over b because what is the conditional probability means the this we have to compute the probability of a over b and since a so just look at the entries of set a because a represents the event that two had appear so just look at the sample space only this one event uh, is showing that 
the two head results or two head appears so a is equal to and this double head and b is the event that there is at least one head so just look at the sample space the three entries belong to the group at least one head so these three will be written here and then next we have to compute the probability of a intersection b b because this is the requirement of our formula so that's why just take the intersection this double head is also lie in this b group so that's why a intersection b is equal to double head and just calculate the, uh, the following terms because a uh, first look at the general formula probability of a over b is equal to probability of a intersection b over probability of b so we need all these terms so that's why he just compute here the probability of a but i think a, a, it is not needed but actually uh, he, uh, this is just a calculation so probability of a is 1 by 4 because there is one event from a and in, in the sample space we have four events so that's why probability of a is equal to 1 by 4 probability of b is 3 by 4 because there are three events in the set of b so 3 by 4 and probability of a intersection b is actually 1 by 4 because there is only one entry here so just put in the values probability of a over b is equal to probability of a intersection b or probability of b just put in the values uh, so this is the intersection value 1 by 4 and over probability of b is 3 by 4 and just make the calculations and uh, you will get the answer which is 1 by 3 so this 1 by 3 is actually means that uh, again understand the statement that two points are tossed what is the conditional probability that two had results you have to find the probability that two had results given that there is at least one head so just from this sample space in which there are the head entries in this sample space you have to compute the probability of getting a double head so that's why it is a conditional probability in conditional pro probability actually the sample space uh, actually uh, reduced uh, but this is a general formula and uh, in this general formula we have to add uh, all the sample space but uh, it actually means uh, that 